So Abe, how do you get started on laying these systems out? It all starts with a nice new wall. They frame it up for us, we paint it gray, so it's nice and neat. Okay. Then we hang the boiler. Great. It all starts there. And then we lay out all the circulators, all the components, so down the road, it's easy for someone to come in here and know what goes where. So it's logical and also can be serviced 20 years from now. That's right. All right. So the system starts with a boiler right here. This is a gas-fired boiler. It's going to take air from outside through a pipe and then exhaust out through here. So you can see inside our unit right here some of the components. There's a gas valve right here that mixes air and gas together into this heating boiler right here. There's a super efficient control right here that is easy to use like a touchpad. Now what happens is flue products go down to this heat exchanger. This is actually the boiler heat exchanger right here. So here's a cutaway. The whole unit is stainless steel. And this is the combustion chamber right here. Flue gas drives down here. It's completely surrounded by water down here. Water will circulate this way. When the burner's on, that super efficient burnt gas pushes down through these small tubes right here. And as it goes down, all the heat gets squeezed out into the water that's right here. And by the time it gets to the bottom, there's not much left except a little bit of condensate and very little temperature going out through the exhaust flue. So now, if we make hot water, what are we going to do with it? Well, one important load is to make water for faucets, the plumbing. We're going to use an indirect hot water tank. An indirect, as its name suggests, means there's no direct flame, not like a gas water heater. This thing uses the boiler's power. The way it works, it starts with a stainless steel tank that's filled with cold water and then there's a coil right here that boiler water is pumped through heat goes to cold heats up the water for the faucets it's super insulated and also doesn't have an exhaust flue right here to cool off the water in the tank so hot water is covered now we have to think about the heating or the distribution to the heating inside the building so here's the manifold that Abe has begun some important components on this it starts with a dirt and air separator right here. We want to be sure no air or dirt is circulating through all the distribution. And a very important component is proper control valves. In the future, it needs to be serviceable. So control valves, shutoff valves are important. We also want to call out these circulator pumps. They're insulated completely and really smart, so they're super efficient. The flow actually changes according to what the building needs, and that saves about 80% electricity over conventional pumps. Each circulator pump sends heated liquid to a different zone or load in the building. Now heated water goes up to an individual air handler and passes through a coil, much like an automobile radiator. At the same time there's a fan which blows air across that coil, picking up temperature and sending that heated air into the ductwork system for that zone. The water that came from the boiler is now cooler and it returns back to the boiler through a return pipe where the cycle repeats and the water is heated again. The air handler does double duty. In the summer, we use it for cooling. Outside the building, there's a condenser unit, and that's filled with chemical refrigerant. Now, inside the condenser, there's a compressor, and that compressor can compress that refrigerant. When it does, it makes it a warm liquid. That warm liquid will be pumped inside the building to the air handler. Inside the air handler, there's another coil called an evaporator. And that has a little valve in it called an expansion valve. When that expansion valve opens, that refrigerant gets incredibly cold. Now air from the building is passed across that coil, and heat has to go to cold. So what happens is it gets absorbed into the refrigerant. When it does, it leaves cool air going into the building, and the heat you've extracted returns back through the return piping, back to the condenser, where a fan blows across it to dump heat to outside and then the cycle repeats. So we have one more mission for our mechanical panel here. You might remember that we have radiant heating in our garage floor. Now the water that we would use from the boiler for making water hot for the faucets or the air handlers would be way too hot to go into that concrete slab. So we need some way to temper it down. Heated water from the boiler goes through a special mixing valve which allows a little bit of that water to blend with the water that's in the radiant loop thereby making that water temperature in the radiant just the right temperature to make sure the cars and the people who live in the suite above very happy. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.